Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Haunted Dolls and Curses video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do one last entry here. I'll give this series a brief rest, then start focusing on another new playlist here. This one is a suggestion that has actually been done in the past. I remember reading about it and I thought I would do it back then, but I started working on some other videos afterwards. It just goes to show that if you don't see your suggestion being done, just give it a little time and I'll get back back to it afterward but yes this one has to do with a strange thing it's an object of sorts it's not necessarily cursed but there could be some superstition associated with it it all depends on the angle of what type of animal this thing is more on that here in a minute but it's it is found near a cathedral it's found near a cemetery as well to this day it's a popular tourist attraction so those of you that happen to be nearby this area you'll be able to check it out as well in fact you're looking at it right now it's known colloquially as the vampire rabbit of newcastle so let's go ahead and let's share all the info known about this mysterious object and then i'd love to hear again what your thoughts are especially those of you that happen to be around at that specific spot so here's the info associated with it you would have to go to an area called newcastle there in tyne england there in united kingdom and then there you'll find some old historic cathedral buildings and then specifically at a spot called the St. Nicholas Cathedral, right there towards the rear, that's where you'll find this. Obviously, this looks like a rabbit. In fact, that's what most people theorize when it comes to its original creation. In fact, it was there, created with the rest of the building itself back in 1901. So over 100 years, this thing has basically been standing on top or being perched on top of that area there, just looking downward with its eternal gaze. What makes it stand off, though, from anything else is it has some unique traits associated with it. For starters, people have pointed out that the ears are actually wrong. They're actually like pointing forward rather than pointing backward. But that, again, seems to de depend on a different angle. More on that again in a minute. And then the second thing is this rabbit has fangs, as you can see here as well. These fangs are pretty large. They're pretty... Uh, noticeable it's not something that would have been done by mistake and then lastly it has those giant nails as well again seems to be just a purposeful thing whenever it was created no one knows too who created it or why and essentially why it's just perched on top of that location forever looking down with its eerie gaze but it's there to this very day although the way you're looking at it now was a little different back then. Apparently, it was colored white or at least off-white, like the rest of the building uh, on the white pattern that it has. That's essentially what it was colored as well. And its ears were actually smaller back then. In fact, you're looking at a picture showcasing the difference of how it was back then. But somewhere along the way, either those ears got an uh, upgrade or they were torn off or got lost in a storm. Who knows? But when that happened, the new ears were placed, but again, they were still placed with a backward stance, and then this creature, whatever it is, it's there. The reason why there's more of like a superstition associated with it, nothing really bad as far as like it being cursed or uh, bring it down upon you like any kind of bad things or bad omens if you don't do something in particular is because it's nearby a cemetery it's nearby a graveyard in fact apparently on the opposite end that's where a graveyard is there the idea is this uh, apparently there were grave robbers back then that would go to that cemetery and then of course would try to pick it and steal things associated with the dead and somewhere along the way there was this fanged beast that rose from the grave or rose nearby and then scared these robbers off. And then in homage, that's when this thing was created, almost like as a thank you to whoever this fanged beast was. I guess it looked like a rabbit. And then when that happened, that's to ward off future robbers as well to let them know that this thing could come back if somebody decides to do that type of activity again. 
That's more on the supernatural side. That's more on this uh, based on this other fact. Some people actually consider it more along the lines of it being a hare instead of a rabbit. I guess there's several distinctions, right, when it comes to that. But if you go by the notion of it being a hare, it's more superstitious because hares are more commonly associated or less commonly associated with death. Apparently, if you find a hare walking across an area there, there's an old English superstition about that, then that means that somebody might die in that area. Or if you happen to see a hare going across another area, then the idea is that there could be a fire that'll happen sometime soon. And yet even more things is involving the location of a hare, like if they pop up during the day, if they're nearby graves, if they're associated during the nighttime. I've seen even paintings tied to hares as well, and other superstitions involving fires associated with hares. Even this, if they come across the path of a pregnant woman, then her bot, then her actual like baby will be born with a hair lip. Again, these are all just unique superstitions that all depend on, I guess, your area uh, or, or what, what you were told and what other people believe in. But those are all tied to hairs and potentially to this statue, whatever it is, if someone considers it a hair. Now, that's just, again, on the far inside, more on the lines of a superstitious link. Now, as far as why it was truly created, there's two more realistic theories. One was that it was a joke. Apparently, there was a famous doctor, like a local one there, that had a big name. People knew him, and he became like a, a founder, actually, of one of the universities there, University of Durham Masonic Lodge. His name was Sir George Hare Philipson. And so the architect must have done this as an idea of tribute to him. In other words, his middle name being Hare, they decided to place it there on top of it as it being an homage to him. Another one is this. Apparently, there was a blacksmith, somebody that was there that was creating unique works with his hands or whatever else to, he was using to create um, his objects. And, 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 and for some reason, they just decided that because he was so fascinated with rabbits slash hares that they decided to create this again as an homage to him and no indication of who is you know which angle is the right one who is the correct uh person that inspired this particular thing whatever it is but that's at least some of the more realistic theories tied to the creation of this of this creature whatever this is but yeah ever since it was created back in 1901 with the cathedral itself it's just basically stood there and then just uh, gearing down peering down it to everyone that happens to cross by and again no bad luck really associated with it but that's pretty much it that's everything tied that i could find about the theories about the creation the reasons and then other angles associated with the vampire rabbit of Newcastle. But if anybody has any more information, anything else I might have missed, then please post those comments below. I'd love to see, too, again, anyone that's lucky enough to go to that spot. I would go there, too. If I was nearby, I would gladly go visit this intricate little thing, whatever it is, and then do a live stream nearby, take some pictures and so on. If anybody happens to have done that, then please post them below. All right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care. Bye.